Hey, what's going on, guys? This is G here. I want to say Happy New Year, and I hope you guys had a safe and successful holiday out there. I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about some of the new features that have been added to the Behringer XR accessibility software that I've been working with. But before I do, I would like to give a quick shout out and thank you to my friend Ryan for helping me with the software via getting on my computer with the X-Air editor itself and helping me understand some of the commands that are not naturally available to me. And of course, Alexei for everything he's doing to help me behind the scenes with all the hard coding and some of the other things that are course over my head. Uh, without those two, this software would not be here now. Um, some of the new features I have added include an entire routing section and some other little bits and pieces such as channel strip configurations like the color of the channel strip and the actual source selection for sending and returning of USB and analog inputs. Uh, so we'll get more into that as we go. So this is going to be an overall video kind of explaining everything from start to finish. So let's get into it. The folder tree is now actually split into five sections and not just four. You have your main outs, you have your channel strips, your bus, your effects, and a new section of your routing section. So let's look at the main section, and there's a couple of things that have been added here. Navigator tree view, level zero main output expanded one of five. Now, the one thing that's mainly been added main is, strip color combo box deal collapse. is the fact that you can change the color strip. And the reason I did this is because that way, whenever you're talking or working with somebody, you know, you can make things a little easier for somebody that might not understand your system easier to acknowledge by grouping things together with different colors. By default, the master out is naturally teal, so I actually kept it there, and it works out. And um, some of the other features are that I actually am removing certain things and adding certain things. So other than that, on the main outputs, nothing else has changed other than this, with the exception of you got the four mute groups and everything, which I believe I talked about in the last video. And uh, compression and EQ are the same. So nothing's changed there. So let's move on to the channel strips where there's quite a few changes made to each of the main strip pages. Navigator tree view, collapsed. Channel strips collapsed two of five level zero. Um, one of the first things you'll notice when you expand it, if you, can't, if you can see, is that there are names there now where channel one was, it's now called kick. I don't know if that was like this in the last video, but name is now added as some of the functionality and it is in real time. So. If you have anything labeled on the X-Air editor software on the computer or tablet and it is labeled with the name, the name will appear here as well. So there are a few things that I have changed in the channel strips alongside the naming of the channel being labeled is the fact that you can change the strip color just like you could with the main app. groupings, strip color combo box blue collapsed. And, um, and it only, and, on checkbox not checked it only tells you the name of the channel whenever you get to the on button and the reason why is because i think it would be overwhelming to have it on every single parameter here so um there's a few more things that i've added so let's check them out solo checkbox not checked sent to main checkbox that's check. all the same now here's some new stuff input source combo box analog collapse. you can choose between your analog usb and your usb input source analog I can't remember if that was in the last video, but this definitely is not. USB return source combo box USB 1 collapsed. And you can choose your USB return source because you have 18 USB sends and returns. And so you can choose which return this channel receives. So that's really cool to have that. So let's keep moving on. You got USB return is your source from USB 1 all the way up to USB 18. USB 18. USB 1. USB trim slider 0D. Your USB trim is here now and um, you can that's of course the trim for the usb return analog source combo box your analog source is something new and you can choose analog one Anal analog one off all the way to off analog 18 and then you know analog 18 off. off and so analog one and nothing has changed beyond this point except at the very end of the navigator group. kick grouping link channels one automix group combo and your auto mix section is here link channels one plus two check box not check your channels automix group combo box off automix x automix y automix x um, but other than that, Navigator Tree View, Kick Collapse 1 of 17, Level 1. That's really all there is that's changed in the um, channel strips, except for something in the sends, and I'll show you that Expanded. right now. Level 2 gate, compressor 2, EQ 304, sends 404 levels. Now, in the sends, you still have your 6 bus and your 4 effects sends. Sends grouping, Chris Monitor Slider Infinity. But you also have Chris Monitor Position Combo. 
the ability to choose what position it's in, all the way from input, input pre EQ to pre EQ, post EQ, pre fader, post fader, subgroup, and pre fader, post fader, to subgroup, post fader. I can't remember if this is in the last video or not, but if it is, I apologize. Now, for the effect sins, you do not get to choose subgroup. You only get to go as far as post fader. So that's all that's really changed in the channel strips one through sixteen. Navigator tree view level one kick expanded one of seventeen. Now on the auxiliary sand. Auxiliary in collapse seventeen of seventeen level one. The auxiliary input, excuse me. Auxiliary in grouping strip color combo box pink collapsed. That's still the same. Auxiliary in unchecked check solo checkbox sent to main checkbox input source combo box analog collapse. The input source is here. USB return source combo box USB seventeen plus eighteen collapsed. And you can choose your USB returns, but the USB returns are obviously stereo paired here. So you have USB one. USB one plus two. USB three plus four. USB 5 plus 6, USB 7, All the USB, way up to 17, USB plus 18. 17 and 18. And then USB trim slider your zero trim is here, but you do not have an analog input selection. Gain slider 26. So that is not available to you. Navigator tree view, auxiliary in collapse. Now, in the bus section, I don't think anything has changed there, but level 0 bus collapse 305. FX collapse bus expanded. But the buses are labeled as well, so you can come into the bus section. Level 1 Chris monitor collapse 1 of 6. And you can go into that. And now, I don't know if this is in the bus groups or Expanded. not. Level 2 Chris Monitor Mix Collapse 1 of 3. You get the mix section, which is basically your overall mix for that particular bus. And then when you expand the mix section. Expanded. Level 3 pen. You got your pen. Level level 3 pen. Bus 1 plus 2. Now, the bus 1 and 2 pen is because you can link these two buses together. And so you can pan between them two to make, make a stereo pair. Now, the buses physically are digital. Now, they are assigned to the auxiliary sends by default. So we'll get more into that as we get into the next sections. So let's, and that's really all that's really changed in the bus section. So let's go back to the... Level 2 Chris Monitor Mix Expanded Collapsed. Look, collapsed. FX Collapsed 4 of 5. Now, the FX section, there's a couple of changes here. Expanded. So let's check items. Level 1 FX1 Collapsed 1 of 4. Now, FX1, which is essentially return 1, but by default, they return to the FX. FX1 Grouping. Strip color combo box green collapsed. Yeah, strip color is green. And the only other thing, like I said, in the effects, you can also choose the strip color, which are yellow. FX1 on checkbox checked. FX1 is still... Solo checkbox. Sent to main checkbox checked. That's all the same. Input source combo box analog collapsed. Your analog and USB input source is here. USB. Analog. USB return source combo box USB 1 plus 2 collapsed. And the USB return sources, which are still stereo pairs, just like they are in the auxiliary in. FX1 master fader slider minus zero. Pan slider center. Mute group group combo box not in group collapsed. That's still the same as like that with all of them. Enable as insert checkbox not checked. You can enable, you can also enable the effects now as an insert. So if you enable it as an insert, the return becomes available to use it however you desire. FX selection combo box vintage room collapsed. Now your FX selection is also now available. All reverb. Plate reverb. Ambience reverb. Rich plate reverb. Room reverb. Chamber reverb. Vintage reverb. Vintage room. Gated reverb. Vintage room. There are 60 effects, so I'm not going to sit here and go through all these, but all 60 of them are here. Wave designer. Dual pitch shift. Stereo pitch shift. Dual tube stage. Stereo tube stage. All reverb. Now, the reason you got stereo and dual is because you can re you can split the effects out left and right, and you can make two of them out of one, even though they have to be the same thing. You, they're just left and right sides, so you got channels one and two. Just like any physical outboard gear. Plate reverb. Ambient rich room reverb. Chamber reverb. Vintage reverb. Vintage room. So. Navigator tree view. FX1 collapsed 1 to 4 level 1. Expanded. So let's see here. Level 2 parameters 1 of 3. Parameters are not implemented yet, but that's going to be one of the next things we're going to do alongside metering. Bus sends 2 of 3 level. Your bus sends, which is your effects to bus. And you can see they're all 6 here. Bus sends grouping. Chris monitor slider plus 0 dB. Chris monitor position combo box post fader. And the position of the fader, you know. And, you know, you essentially um, can see. Dave monitor, Dave monitor, G monitor, G monitor, G monitor, G monitor, parallel drum slider infinity. So, yeah, they're all here. Navigator tree view. Bus sends 2 of 3 level 2. Uh, you're wondering why it says Chris, Dave, and G because that's what monitors they are in my band. Returns 3 of 3, level 2. Now, your returns is the mix that's going to that bus. For example, kick, snare, and all. Returns grouping. Kick, slider, infinity. Snare, slider, infinity. Tom, 1, slider, infinity. Tom, 2, slider. Tom, 3, slider, infinity. Except Navigator tree view. Returns 3 of 3, level Now. Level 1, FX1, it collapsed. Level 0, FX, expand, collapsed. Now, here's a brand new section. Routing. Routing collapsed 5 of 5, level 0. So let's expand and see. Now, if you look at the routing's main page, you will see... Routing grouping. Main outputs combo box main LR Your main output, which is assigned to main left, right. You can choose any of the following. Monitor. Your monitor. USB 1 plus 2. USB 1 and 2. USB 3 plus 4. 3 and 4. USB 5 plus 5 6, 6. USB 7, 7 plus 8. 7 and 8, all the way up to... USB 17 plus 18. 17 and 18. Main LR. But that's your main LR, which is your main output to your mixer. And by default, that's what your main output you're connected to. Headphones combo box monitor collapsed. Now your headphones can be assigned the same way. 
So headphones can be actually assigned to USB one plus two. Monitor. The monitor is basically for like if you're soloing something or whatever, but I don't see us using that. I don't see myself using it anyways, but you never know. So it's here in case you ever want to do it. Navigator tree view. So let's look at all the different routing sections and how they're underlined. Expanded. Level one auxiliary sense collapsed. One. The auxiliary sense or the physical auxiliary sim device or the auxiliary sim outputs on the console, just like the main outputs were for the main LR that are assigned to it. These are the actual six auxiliary sins on the device itself. And as you can, and by default, they are assigned to bus one through six. Auxiliary sense grouping. Auxiliary send one combo box bus one collapsed. Auxiliary send two combo box bus two collapsed. Auxiliary send three combo box bus three collapsed. Auxiliary send four combo box bus four collapsed. Auxiliary send five combo box bus five collapsed. And so auxiliary sense six combo box bus six collapsed. Active. Navigator tree view. Auxiliary sense grouping. Now you have the choice of going from channel one. Channel one. Channel ten. Channel 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 auxiliary channel. Channel sixteen. Auxiliary and L. You can do channel, you can do auxiliary left. Auxiliary and R. Auxiliary right. FX1 L. FX1 L. FX1 R. FX2 L. FX2 R. FX3 L. FX3 R. FX4 L. FX4 R. FX1 through 4 left and right respectively. Bus 1. Bus 1. Bus 2. Bus 2. Bus, bus 4. Bus 6. Bus 5. Bus 6. Effect 1. Effect 1, which is straight from the effects of source. Effect 2. Effect 3. Effect 4. Main L. Your main L and R. Main R. So you can literally have two sets of main outputs or, you know, conjunction them if you want. It doesn't matter. You can... USB 1. Which would be useful if you're going to have subwoofers at some point, but I don't have mine set up for that. USB 2. USB 2. USB 3. 3. USB 4. 4. USB 5. 5. USB 6. 6. USB 7. All the way up to USB 18. 18. So let's go back. USB to not. Main R. Bus 3. Bus, bus 1. Because that's what it was assigned to. Auxiliary send 2 combo box. Bus 2 collapsed. Navigator tree expanded. Level 2 auxiliary send. Now. Le level 2 auxiliary send positions 1 of 1. Okay, now you got the auxiliary and positions. Now the position is where the bus, where the auxiliary sends and how they behave, basically. And in this case, auxiliary send positions grouping. Auxiliary send one position combo box post fader collapsed. It's post fader, which means your bus faders or any fader that is assigned to it will manipulate it. So therefore, if you can choose analog, analog, which means if it's an analog input or any, or it's a direct source input. So it will not be affected. So you can basically make it an, a pass-through, essentially. Analog plus mute. Analog plus mute, which means if it's muted, it'll be muted at the bus as well, or at the auxiliary send as well, excuse me. Input. Input plus mute. Pre-EQ. Pre-EQ, same Pre-EQ plus mute. Post-EQ. 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 Pre-fader. Pre-fader, which is pretty much like anything, you know, so any effects and processing that is done to it comes through. The only thing that doesn't get affected by it is the fader. Pre-fader plus mute. And the pre fader plus mute, so if it's muted, it's self explanatory. Post fader. Post fader is pretty much whatever happens to whatever it's assigned to is how that output behaves. And so that's how that works. And it's the same thing for all six auxiliary sends. So these buses can be routed to these auxiliary sends. You can route effects to them. You can route it however you want to at this point. And it's kind of nice to know that this is completely available to you now. Navigator tree view. Auxiliary send positions one of one. Level one auxiliary collapsed. USB sends. Now, the USB sends is the same thing, but since they are digitally sent out through USB, you can assign what goes out through that USB. So let's take a look at this here. You got 18 USB outputs or USB sends. So each of those 18 USB channels that get sent over the USB into your DAW are going to be assigned to whatever you assign to it. USB sends grouping. USB 1 combo box channel 1 collapsed. For in this case, USB 1 is sent to channel 1. So whatever is done on channel 1 goes out to USB. And in this case, it's sent via analog. Now, I didn't know that this was a thing. And it's kind of nice to know this because when I go to record my band, I can do a raw mix and everything. And I'll talk about that more as we go. So... So this is channel one, which is, you know, obviously channel strip one. Channel two. Channel strip two, all the way up to channel strip 16. Channel, 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 channel 13. Channel 14. Channel 15. Channel 16. Auxiliary and L. Now auxiliary and L. Auxiliary and R. And auxiliary and R are the inputs 17 and 18, you know, the TRS inputs on the actual unit itself. Or, you know, the, the ones with auxiliary ends. FX1L. Your FX one L through FX four R just like before. F F F F FX three L, FX three R, FX four L, FX four R, bus one. Bus one through six. Bus, bus three, bus four, bus five, bus six. Effect one. FX one through effect, four. Effect, effect four. Main L. 
main art. Main L and main art. You do not obviously have to use the USB because you use every kind of a pointless thing to be able to do. Channel one. So whatever you send out through that USB is how it's brought into the board. So anything you want to send out to those those 18 USB channels, you can assign them here. Navigator tree view. USB sense collapse. Expanded. Level two USB send positions one. Now the send position is the same thing. USB send positions grouping. USB one position combo box analog collapsed. Navigator tree view. USB sent. Level two USB send positions collapsed. Ultranet collapsed three. Now the last thing on the routing list is the ultranet. So let's take a look at this. Now the ultranet is the Ethernet port that you can send six channels of anything that you want out through this ultranet connection and send it to like a p16m i will be procuring one of those actually it will be here tomorrow and i will get to play with that thing so it'll be a lot of fun and this is good especially for monitoring which frees up you know in my case two of the bus sends because you never know what's going to happen so i will have a dedicated way of physically controlling my monitors on stage and this is going to be a really nice addition and the alternate allows me to choose and change what is being sent through the alternate sends because there's 16 of them. So the same 56 applications apply to the alternate that apply to the auxiliary sends. Alternate grouping. Alternate one combo box channel one collapsed. So you can see right now alternate one is assigned to channel one and you can go all the way to USB 18, USB 18, which is on those 56 commands. Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel 13, FX2R, bus five. Bus 4, bus 5, bus 6, effect 1, effect 2, effect 3, effect 4, main L, main R, USB 1, USB 2, USB channel 1. So I'm going to go back to channel 1, and that's where that's going to be. And I have this alternate, and like I said, it doesn't matter if I mess this all up, I already have these templates saved, so it's all good. <laughs> and the alternate positions are Navigator the same tree view. Alternate expanded, level 2 alternate position 1 of 1. And that's the last thing on this list. Alternate position grouping, alternate 1 position combo box prefader plus mute collapsed. I have the option of doing the same things for the alternate positions as I did for the USB SIN and the auxiliary SIN. So look at it as they're all SINs, alternate, USB, and auxiliary. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, it can go from analog all the way to pre-fader plus mute, actually to post. Analog, analog plus mute, input, input plus mute, pre-EQ, pre-EQ, post-EQ, post-EQ, pre-fader, pre-fader plus, post-fader, pre-fader plus mute. So yeah, that's how that's all set up. And that's all the new stuff that I have now added to the Xair accessibility software. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And I'm sorry for any hiccups or anything that I may be saying during the video that kind of get cut through. Um, again, this means a great deal to me. I appreciate you guys' support. Um, I would love to do this again for an X32 console at some point down the road, but the thing is, um, that will require me having an X32, which I do not own. Thank you guys for watching. This is G signing out saying peace.